Hello, my name is Sydney, and today I'm going to talk about how you can find clinical experience as a pre-med. I've made lots of other pre-med related videos, and excitingly, this will be my last pre-med video before starting medical school. I will link my pre-med playlist as well as this video's timestamps in the description. Without further ado, let's begin. Clinical experience is any work interacting with patients in a clinical environment, such as a hospital, clinic, healthcare facility, or hospice center to name a few. Clinical experience can be pretty ambiguous to define. So from what a PA friend told me, since pre-PA students need a lot of clinical hours to apply to school, a good rule of thumb is to consider clinical experience as work that involves touching or talking to patients to facilitate their care. I do want to make the distinction that shadowing, though it gives you that insight in the clinical environment, does not constitute clinical experience. Since you are not actively partaking in the patient's care. As for how many hours do you need, there isn't a magic number, but from what I've read online, consistent clinical experiences in your involvements, volunteering, and projects is what matters most. But if you wanted a general benchmark, med school headquarters stated 200 hours of consistent clinical experience over your pre-med years is sufficient. Clinical experience can be paid or unpaid, and I'll divide examples under that framework. For unpaid clinical experience, Usually this falls under the umbrella of volunteering and is typically more flexible because there is a lower time commitment. A lot of pre-meds partake in unpaid clinical experience in college. Some examples of this clinical experience include hospital volunteering, outpatient clinic volunteering, visiting senior centers, volunteering at the hospice center, volunteering at a free clinic, which their main emphasis is on the underserved, and volunteering as a medical interpreter. For paid clinical experience, This usually entails something that is of a higher time commitment, thus resulting in regular work hours as it is more job-based. Typically for paid clinical experience, you can expect to have pre-meds complete this during their summers or gap years. Some examples include being a medical scribe, an emergency medicine technician, a medical translator, and I looked online for these, but these other forms of healthcare technicians, such as certified patient care technician, certified EKG technician, certified phlebotomy technician, certified clinical medical assistant, certified certified medical assistant, certified nursing assistant, and registered behavior technician. Of these that I listed, I personally was a certified phlebotomy technician as well as a registered behavior technician. I would say this varies on a case-by-case -case basis, but my main gap year job was a clinical research coordinator and it just so happened with my roles and what I was needed for the job, it incorporated a lot of clinical duties as well, such as sample collection and patient consenting. Of these jobs that I listed, if you wanted more information on each, such as the specific roles and training requirements necessary to be certified. I've linked a site in the description to read more on these types of clinical experiences. In terms of where to find clinical experiences, you can 1. Apply to a volunteer program. I've seen a couple in my hometown that ranges from high school age up until college and beyond. For example, the hospital volunteering program that I was a part of in high school essentially put me in the environment to help out the nurse. For these type of programs, it can vary in terms of how hands-on you are. I've seen some programs where you're very hands-on and you're essentially the nurse's aide. Conversely, I've seen other programs that are more hands-off to have students discharge patients, file, answer phone calls, and do more admin tasks. Other other types of volunteer programs could be volunteering at your local senior citizen center or adult day centers. Number two, you can apply for a job. Ways I recommend you to find this job are referrals. Referrals from family and friends are so powerful, especially if that person is currently transitioning out. Managers definitely appreciate having someone who's currently working there suggest someone that they already trust to fill in that role. There's also organizations that can link you to future jobs. And lastly, I personally found my job as clinical research coordinator through a job posting. Specifically what I did is I googled the location that I was trying to find a job in, so the city name, as well as the specific job that I wanted. I found job postings on Glassdoor, Indeed, and ZipRecruiter for example. If you are planning to go this route, my biggest advice is to take this in steps. So the first step being one, identify the type of job that you want. What is the job title? This helps focus your job search and it makes the process of constructing tailored resumes and cover letters much 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 easier. 
from this specific job that you want, diversify all the eggs that you put your job post in baskets by looking up and researching different companies. And some things to keep in mind are what are the general job roles that that company would want you to do? What is training like? How much is the pay? And where is the location? Once all the information is identified, it's up to you to weigh the pros and cons to ultimately choose the best job that fits your specific needs. And three, you can ask a family member or a friend. So this tip can pretty much be applied everywhere, but mentioning the common link to the job recruiter will place a mental note of, oh, I know this person, possibly making it more likely that you'll positively be remembered and chosen for the job. Of course, assuming that that mentioned link evokes positive memories. <laughs> Some places emphasize that they want people with licenses or X amount of years of experience already, which can be especially difficult based on your gap year timeline and if you're newly coming out of college. What helped me land jobs is playing up my resume to reflect the qualities they were looking for. So since I did a lot of free, <laughs> free work in volunteer orgs, I wrote down my leadership experiences in these orgs. I made it applicable by translating my experiences to tangible skills that that job wants. Oftentimes I would read the job requirements and incorporate those into my application. In terms of putting your best foot forward, the cover letters and resumes are these companies first impression of you. Yes, it's tempting just to mass a apply with the resume you already have at hand, but you will really, really help yourself out if you put a little of that TLC to tailor your cover letters and resumes to be strong and applicable to the job that you're applying to. Also, another thing that helped me is emphasizing my interpersonal skills, just to show them that I had some life experience that would make me transition to a worker a lot easier. So for example, I wanted to show that I had communication skills, was a team player, quick learner, organized, and just in layman's term, have my ish together. <laughs> I wanted to show that I was thoughtful and proactive. For example, using that company site, I would, as like a mental exercise, identify potential areas of improvement where I'd make a hypothetical plan to get to that improved area if I was hired for the job that I could possibly discuss either in my cover letter or in my interview. This also shows that you have the want to improve systems and bring value to their company. By doing so, you show them that these goals are achievable and will be pleasantly achievable with you on their team. To propel myself forward, I also use familiarity to my advantage. So even if I didn't have experience in that specific job or that licensure, <laughs> I use experiences I did have. For example, I wanted a job as a clinical research coordinator, but all of my research experience was bench work. But I use that as a talking point to show how my research background gave me to contacts to understand the overarching goal, communicate research to patients, and ultimately understand what the sciences want on a deeper level. <laughs> I also had experience with data systems prevalent in clinical research such as Epic, CareConnect, and RedCap. By using these buzzwords, it showed that I had general knowledge in this field that I would more easily build upon if I was hired for the job. Lastly, what I believe set me apart was highlighting my availability to start. Most of the time in terms of hiring for a job, it's a matter of hiring someone that's solid enough but ultimately is the best logistical hire. And what I mean by that is when can they start? So what is the quickest start time and what is the projected stay with the company? Company, which is more relevant if you're trying to apply for a gap year job. By being upfront and specific with these two things, you emphasize that you put foresight in your transition into this job in a way that shows how both parties will win if you're hired. So that was all I wanted to cover in today's how to find clinical experience video. If you found that helpful, please let me know with a thumbs up and a comment below. I really appreciate you guys sticking through the pre-med process with me. Am I getting sentimental because this will be the last pre-med video of the pre-med playlist? Because that would be awkward. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!